We're joined by Jeff Stager from the Waterloo Federation of Agriculture, which works to promote the farm community in the region. So to start off, can you tell us a bit about what the Federation does and what your role within it is? Thanks, Sierra. I will do that. So the Federation of Agriculture in the region of Waterloo is, a, is about half of the census population of farms in the region. We're one of three farm organizations. These are general farm organizations, which means we don't do particularly commodity-specific issues. I think most people would associate agriculture with a few, a few of the cows and the crop of corn. We look after things like, what is the municipality doing about zoning land? What's the municipality doing about hydro rates and that sort of thing? Where are the roads going to go? So we cover all the bases on a specific issue. So having said that, the Federation, um, we're about 700 members here in the region of Arden, and uh, I'm in the past president and also now a director of the Federation of Agriculture, Warren Federation of Agriculture. And what does your role entail as the director? So as a general, uh, it includes things like what we're doing today. We want to out there talk about agriculture. We want to be out there meeting people who are interested in agriculture, tell the story. Um, before we started today's uh, broadcast, we were just uh, talking about the, the dynamics in Ontario where a majority of Ontarians probably don't know much about agriculture and it's not their fault. It's just the fact is there's not that connection to the rural areas much. Since um, we're a modern society and it's based on tech, finance and all those things. So. Um, are there any emerging trends within agriculture in the sectors that the Federation deals with that you find exciting or worrisome, particularly for the Waterloo region? No, there's something interesting to come up with, of many things. I don't know where to start, but just sitting here right now. Um, there's a concept floating around in the agriculture community, not just locally in the region, but uh, across the country. The idea of environmental goods and services. For instance, as we go about our, in our industry, as we go about doing our things of growing food, fiber, and, and so on, you know what, we, took, we sequester the carbon dioxide as part of our process, and we also produce oxygen. Now, those are not, you cannot get rewarded for them. There's no market for those, per se. As uh, in the water region is a good example, um, we are the largest municipality in Ontario that gets this water from groundwater, we can't put it into a pipe, into the, into the lakes. So the farmers, by the way they grow their crops, and uh, the rotations they use, and how they manage that land, can really help the natural infiltration of rainwater through the aquifer, where it's after eventually it's gonna obviously naturally filtered. And the city, the lovely people at Kitchener Luke can just put a pipe in and up comes clean water. That's environmental goods of service. How do you quantify it? So looking, so the message to you is, um, our urban listeners, uh, decision makers, need to, uh, it's a complex algorithm. How do you ever keep track of that? Like how many, that, but this is a valid point for agriculture and it's gonna need a slightly different lens to look through moving forward when it comes to environmental issues and, uh, and uh, what kind of regulation should be on the farm. So what can yeah. um, like the average person do in this? Like, what would you recommend as a course of action or how can they help move forward these types of changes? Well, I think, um, you know, they should uh, probably, uh, if there's something of interest comes along, try to do some of their own due diligence, investigate the claim. You know, in fact, I, uh, our farms back to the environment, are they not? Try to find out, just go past the first Google headline. Um, you know, you want to equally look at um, newspapers and media, uh, you want to look at government sources and the like. Of course, they're gonna to want to go to alternative journals and get their, their fresh look at it too. And, uh, you know, responsible, uh, so responsibility is to investigate the issues as best you can and, and then make decisions rather than for the moment, back of the envelope, here we go. Mm -hmm. um, you've answered this in part already, but in case you have some more to add to it, what stake do farmers and members of the Federation of Agriculture have in protecting the environment, and what support do they need? Okay, so yeah, we did. So the first part of that, of course, uh, we need to protect the, the environment because that protects our farms, our business. And what support do you need? Well, that's an interesting one. Let's um, let's go with a program that actually exists in the Marley region right now. I've been here 30 years. 
It's been a model for the rest of the province. It's called the Rural Water Quality Program. And uh, the issue here is that the, the costs of the program are shared half and half between the farm owner, the landowner, and uh, the, the public through taxation. So what's this about? So uh, we, we talked about water supply, for instance. And uh, if you take a simple um, concept that uh, stream should have a buffer around them so that you don't get in rush of solids and junk that's filtered by the grass. So let's say that the uh, recommendation is uh, 10 meters, 30 feet. So uh, the landowner will go about doing that. <clears throat> but the, the landowner is out money plus the permanent um, retirement of that chunk of dirt they can no longer make a living at. And this is for to make the water supply better for everybody. But well, that's very good if you can do it financially and support it. Here's where the Rural Water Quality Program comes in. This is a made Marley program, and in that situation, the taxpayer helps pay for, for creating that buffer and also for longer term income loss because of that. So, we're, so the answer to your question, short answer is you can do whatever you want on the farm, you name it, but this is what it costs. Right. Right? So we can still make a living and society gets what it needs, or what it's asking for at the time. So is the Rural Water Quality Program something that the Federation of Agriculture helped to implement? Yeah, that's a great story. Uh, this all started about 30, 40 years ago when the regional water didn't confirm that uh, we're going to do mostly groundwater. And, uh, you know, if we're going to do that, then we better, why don't we just head up and probably the source. We're in the Grand River watershed, lots of little streams and that stuff. And if the farm guys, the land, rural landowners, not just farm guys, rural landowners do certain things, that uh, water will stay more pristine, it won't be clouded, clouded up with uh, dissolved sediments, and it won't be contaminated by a lot of organic matter and so on. So that's where it came from. The regional Waterloo was initiated and they had the foresight to, you know what, maybe we should talk to the landowners about this. <laughs> it's great. Set off a nice, uh, we think in order to reach a good relationship with our levels of government where we've had the success of the previous water quality program 30 years ago, 40 years, and we continue that, uh, we continue that uh, relationship now moving forward. We're looking forward to, you know, even the next regional official policy plan, which is being updated now, which will the planning horizon that I think it's 2040. Maybe something you would know about, and you're, you're up to date in all these types of things. And uh, so given that uh, idea of cooperation for the benefit of society and then some cost, I think that's a good model. Yeah. Is there anything that you're working on right now that you think others would be interested in? Well, funny you should ask, but just as of today, in Cambridge, <clears throat> there is a facility called the Rare Reserve. I don't know if you've heard of that or not. They've taken over the Crookston Park farm and they have a thousand acres of Carolinian forest. And Blood mm -hmm. are around. Today they're announcing that they're partnering with a group called Alice, which is the alternative land use system. And uh, this, the, the premise behind Alice, which is existing now in three municipalities in Ontario, the premise is that if you have an identifiable, unique uh, biosphere on your property, so let's suppose it's a swamp, or maybe it's a tall grass prairie, or maybe it's a species. This group will help you, help that landowner, maintain that environment. And either the cost of doing it or management things you can do to preserve that habitat for the bobolinks, for instance. Oh. So this, today's is the announcement of the first steps between Alice, a provincial organization that three counties are involved with, and the first steps at creating a, re a relationship with the regional water group. And uh, I think it's on right now, actually, and it, 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 um, what could be happening is, uh, I would suspect probably rare there's going to be the first site of Alice funding uh, to match up that landowner's need with society's needs. Mm -hmm. What's your perspective on protecting the environment? That's pretty straightforward. I mean, you gotta do that. There's no value to me in my business not to protect the environment. And what does that mean to you? I can't degrade the resource I make a living on. I can't degrade the soil. I can't degrade um, the water. I made no signal. 
I lived out there. I eat at the water came for my own purposes, for my lifestyle. Any final comments to leave off on or something you really think others should be aware of? So sure, from an agriculture perspective, the Royal Federation of Agriculture, you tell us what you want and we can do it. The technology is there to do it. Whatever your wishes are, but this is what it will cost. If you want to grow bananas, we can grow bananas, but they'll be expensive. <laughs> so people will have to be ready to indicate where the trade-off is for them based on their values and what the consensus wants. So the good news is what we do right now is great. There's no reason why we have any trouble preserving the environment. We're doing our own butter business right now, and that otherwise we spoil our own vast base. So, but we're open to all kinds of comments. Public, get involved, check out claims you're concerned about as best you can by your own devices. And uh, the Federation, on our behalf, like I'm doing today, more than letting go talk to groups, what, what does he want to know, what you want to talk about. It certainly is true that. You know, if you don't, it's always good to meet people and see where they're coming from. It makes it more real rather than throwing stuff back and forth. Talk to us, we'll tell you what we can do, what we're doing. Glad to do that. Thank you so much for joining us, Jeff. That was Jeff Stager for the Waterloo Federation of Agriculture, and you can head to their website to find out more information.